Hello everyone, how are you all? I hope you all are fine. In the last session, we have read that Lali was learning the violin. And now we are going to complete the reading of the chapter. We will do the vocabulary along with the reading. So listen carefully. Are you ready? Let's start. Have a look at the picture and it shows that Mridu, Meena and Ravi were standing at the window while Lali and music teacher were sitting and playing the violin. Mridu crept up to the window. Lali was sitting a little distance away, awkwardly holding her violin and bowstring, her elbows jutting out and her eyes glazed with concentration. Here you can see how Lali was sitting and looking at the master with full concentration. Now here is the description of the music master. In front of her with most of his back to the window was the bony figure of the music master. He had a mostly bald head with a fringe of oiled black hair falling around his ears and an old fashioned tuft. A gold chain gleamed, gleamed means shine. A gold chain gleamed around his leathery neck and a diamond ring glittered on his hand as it glided up and down the stem of the violin. A large foot stuck out from beneath his gold bordered Veshti edge. Veshti is Dhoti and he was beating time on the floor with the scrawny big toe. He played a few notes. Lali stumbled behind him on her violin which looked quite helpless and unhappy in her hands. What a difference. The music master's notes seemed to float up and settle perfectly into the invisible tracks of the melody. It was like the wheels of a train fitting smoothly into the rails and whizzing along. As Ravi said, Mridu stared at that huge beringed hand moving effortlessly up the violin stem making lovely music. Beringed means to wear rings. Squawk. There was Lali derailing again. Amma came a wail from the gate. Amma, oh! Ravi, send that beggar away, cried his mother from the back veranda, where she was chatting with the pati. He has been coming here every day for the past week, and it's time he found another house to beg from. Pati explained to Tapi. Here the word comes awkward. Awkward means weird, which we have done yesterday. Weird is something strange or unusual. Here a scene has been recreated that how Lali was learning the violin. And there comes a beggar. Mridu and Meena followed Ravi out. The beggar was already in the garden making himself quite at home. He had spread his upper cloth under the neem tree and was leaning against its trunk, apparently prepared to take a little snooze while he waited for the arms to appear. Go away, said Ravi sternly. My pati says it's time you found another house to beg from. The beggar opened his eyes very wide and gazed at each of the children one by one. The ladies of this house, he said at last in a voice choked with a feeling, are very kind souls. I have kept my body and soul together on their generosity for a whole week. I cannot believe that they would turn me away. He raised his voice, Amma, oh Amma, sad his will might be, but it certainly was not feeble. It began in a deep, strong rumble somewhere in his withered belly and came booming out of his mouth with its few remaining teeth stained brown with beetle chewing. Ravi, tell him there is nothing left in the kitchen, called Rukumani. Ravi didn't have to repeat it all to the beggar. What his mother said had been easy for them all to hear, there under the neem tree. The beggar sat up and sighed. I will go, I will go, he said wearily. Only let me have a rest here under this tree. The sun is so hot, the tar has melted on the road. My feet are already blistered. 
He stretched out his feet to show large pink peeling blisters on the soles of his bare feet. I suppose he doesn't have the money to buy chappals, Mridu whispered to Meena and Ravi. Have you got an old pair in the house somewhere? I don't know, said Ravi. Mine are too small to fit his feet or I would have given them to him. And his feet were larger than Mridu's and Meena's. The beggar was shaking out his upper cloth and tightening his dhoti. He raised his eyes and looked fearfully at the road, gleaming in the afternoon heat. He needs something on his feet, Meena said, her big eyes filling. It's not fair. Shh, said Ravi. I am thinking about it, blubbering. It's not fair, it's not fair, is not going to help. In two minutes, he will be frying his feet on that road. What he needs is a pair of chappals. So where do we get them? Come, let's search the house. He pushed Mridu and Meena into the house. Just as she stepped into the veranda, Mridu's eyes fell on the odd-looking chappals she looked she had noticed when she arrived. Ravi, she whispered to him, whose are those? Ravi turned and glanced at the shabby-looking but sturdy old slippers. He beamed and nodded. These are just the right size, he said, picking them up. Mridu and Meena followed him nervously back into the garden. Here, said Ravi to the beggar, dropping the slippers in front of the old man. Wear these and don't come back. The beggar stared at the slippers, hurriedly flung his towel over his shoulder, pushed his feet into them and left, muttering a blessing to the children. In a minute, he vanished around the corner of the street. The music master came out of the house and took an unappreciative look at the three of them, sitting quietly under the tree, playing marbles. Then he searched for his chapels in the veranda, where he had put them. Lali, he called after a few moments. She hurried up to him. Have you seen my chapels, my dear? I remember having kept them here. Rukumani was fed up of him as he had started coming every day. So the beggar sat down there and, think, and started thinking of taking a snooze. Now what is snooze? Snooze is to take a nap or a short sleep. You must have uh, read this word in the alarm section of your mobile. When the alarm rings, it gives you two options. One is stop, another is snooze. And when you snooze, it gives you a time to take a short sleep. The beggar was waiting for his arms. But Rukumani was reluctant to give anything. Then the beggar started praising Rukumani that she is very generous because he could survive a week only because of her but of no use. Here comes the word generous. Generous means to be kind. You have noticed that sometimes our mother speaks so loudly that everybody out can hear her clearly. In the same way, Rukumani asked the beggar to leave. But the beggar asked the children to let him take rest under the tree and showed them his blisters, which actually made them to feel a pity on him. And children gave master's chapel to him and asked them to leave. Ravi, Mridu and Meena silently watched Lali and the music master search every corner of the veranda. He scurried around, looking over the railing and crouching near the flower pots to look between them. Brand new they were. I went all the way to Mount Road to buy them. He went on saying, they cost a whole month's fees, do you know? Soon Lali went in to tell her mother, Rukumani appeared. Where could they be? It's really quite upsetting to think someone might have stolen them. So many vendors come to the door, worried Pati. Rukumani caught sight of Ravi, Mridu and Meena sitting under the tree. Have you children? She began and then seeing they were curiously quiet, went on more slowly, seen anyone lurking around the veranda? A sharp V-shaped line had formed between her eyebrows. Another straight, tighter one appeared in place of her usually soft, pleasant mouth. Rukumani was angry, thought Mridu with a shiver. She would not be so upset if she knew about the poor beggar with sores on his feet, she tried to tell herself. Taking a deep breath, she cried, Rukumani, there was a beggar here. Poor thing, he had such boils on his feet. So, 
said Rukumani grimly, turning to Ravi. You gave the music master's chapel to that old beggar who turns up here? Amma, didn't you tell me about Karn, who gave away everything he had, even his gold earrings? He was so kind and generous. Silly, Karn did give away other people's things. He only gave away his own. But my chapels would not have fitted the beggar's feet. Ravi rushed brashly on. And Amma, if they did fit, would you really not have minded? Ravi, said Rukumani, very angry now, go inside this minute. She hurried indoors and brought out Gopu Mama's hardly worn new chapels. These should fit you, sir. Please put this on. I am so sorry. My son has been very naughty. The music master's eyes lit up. He put them on, trying not to look too happy. Well, I suppose these will have to do. These days, children have no respect for elders. What to do? A Hanuman incarnate. Only Ram can save such a naughty fellow. Rukumani's eyes flashed. He didn't seem to like Ravi being called a monkey, even a holy monkey. She stood stiff and stood by the front door. It was clear she wanted him to leave quickly. When he had clattered off in his new chapels, she said, Mridu, come in and have some tiffin. Honestly, how do you children think of such things? Thank God your Gopu Mama doesn't wear these chapels to work. As she walked towards the kitchen with Mridu and Meena, she suddenly began to laugh. But he is always in such a hurry to throw off his shoes and socks and get into his chapels as soon as he comes home. What's your mama going to say this evening? When I tell him, I gave his chapels to the music. Master came looking for his chapels and asked Lali about the same. Lali told her mother about this and she asked the children angrily. And out of fear, Mridu told her everything. Ravi justified to this by saying, Mom, you yourself had told me about Karan. Karan gave away everything he had. Listening to this, Rukumani got annoyed and told him, he gave his things, not others. But somehow, she had to manage the whole situation and she was quite embarrassed too. So she gave their mama's chapel to the teacher. And this way, two people got a gift of chapels. One was the beggar and the other was the teacher. I hope you enjoyed the story. So in the next session, we are going to cover the back exercises. Till then, bye-bye.